I'm Sherilyn Smith from the University of Washington, and in this video, we're going to build on your knowledge of the pathogenesis and immune response to VZV. I will be focusing on the clinical presentation of VZV, both varicella as well as zoster. Here are the learning objectives for this video. Recognize the clinical manifestations of VZV infection. As a reminder, this is the course map to help you locate where VZV fits in. So remember this rash. If your patient develops a rash with blisters, which is also called a vesicular rash, we want you to recognize this rash quickly and accurately. I want to go back to our story about primary infection with VZV. Remember, this is a previously healthy 18-month-old boy who developed a fever to 38.5 in the first day of illness and then didn't play as much as usual. The next day, he developed a raised red rash on his stomach and chest. Throughout the day, he developed more and more of the same rash, and it began to change a little bit, and he began to scratch these bumps. He has varicella or chickenpox. So let's focus on the common epidemiologic points. In general, more people get infected with VZV in temperate climates than in tropical climates, and the infection occurs more commonly in the late winter and spring, possibly related to spending more time indoors, which will facilitate transmission. This is a very infectious organism. The attack rate or development of a second case in a previously uninfected household member is 90%. Transmission occurs by two routes, respiratory shedding of the virus during secondary viremia and direct contact with fluid from the vesicles. Prior to widespread immunization, it's estimated that there were approximately 4 million cases of varicella a year, which resulted in somewhere between 11,000 and 13,500 hospitalizations a year and 100 to 150 deaths. This puts a different spin on a disease that many people think of as a normal childhood illness. The greatest disease burden is in children, particularly in temperate climates, as I mentioned before. Children account for more than 90% of cases, 70% of hospitalizations, and 50% of deaths. Interestingly, the burden of disease occurs in older individuals in tropical or warm climates, but the reasons for this are not completely understood. This graphic outlines the different stages of the varicella rash. The initial rash begins as discrete erythematous papules, or separate raised red bumps. These then change to vesicles or blisters with clear fluid. As the immune response matures, the vesicles filled with cloudy fluid uh, which um, are, is composed of T cells. Finally, the vesicles burst and crust over by about five to seven days after the first papule appears. The key finding, in addition to the progression of the rash, is that the patient will have the rash at various stages on their body all at the same time. So looking around, you'll see some papules, vesicles with clear fluid or cloudy fluid mixed in with crusting lesions until the immune response completely controls the infection. Other characteristics include a central distribution, which means that there are more lesions on the trunk and abdomen than are on the arms or legs. Varicella can also involve mucous membranes like the mouth, conjunctiva, or vagina. The average number of lesions is somewhere between 200 and 500, and secondary cases in a household have more severe disease, sometimes with over 1,000 lesions. If varicella occurs in immunized patients, it may be very mild, with only a few papules and minimal crusting. Remember that during infection, patients are also viremic, and the virus travels to other organs in addition to the skin. Sometimes, patients will present with pneumonia, hepatitis, or encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain. This type of presentation is more common in patients with immune dysfunction. In this x-ray, you can see inflammation in all parts of the lung, which is varicella pneumonia. So that was varicella caused by BZV. So now let's talk about zoster. This is the picture of Tom, who is the 52-year-old who had three days of persistent tiredness and two days of sharp, moderate pain on his right chest to the point that putting on a shirt hurt. Last night, he noticed three to four red bumps or erythematous papules on his chest. When he woke up, it was much worse. This is a picture after two more days with the rash. He had had chicken pox as a child, but this is a new type of rash for him. So zoster or shingles is a disease of older patients um, and people with impaired immune responses. 
In this graph, you can see that the incidence goes up as you get older. Approximately 75% of shingles cases occur in people older than 45 years of age, with the highest rates in patients over 60. It's estimated that somewhere between half a million and a million cases of zoster occur in the U.S. annually. Transmission is primarily through contact with fluid from the vesicles. So let's talk more about that characteristic rash. To, to recognize zoster when it occurs, you have to understand some neuroanatomy. In particular, what dermatomes are. A dermatome is an area of skin supplied by sensory neurons that arise from the spinal nerve ganglion. There are a total of 30 spinal nerves with spinal nerve ganglions and 29 dermatomes. The first cervical ganglion does not have a dermatome. Each of these nerves relays sensation, including pain, from a particular region of the skin to the brain. Symptoms that follow a dermatome may indicate pathology that involves the related nerve ganglion. Since VZV is latent in sensory ganglia, the rash occurs in a dermatomal distribution that is typically unilateral. The chest is the most common site of infection, followed by the head and neck in the trigeminal nerve distribution, which is shown in this slide. Pain, itching, numbness or tingling, unpleasant sensations, and sensitivity to touch characterize the presentation. Pain can precede the rash for up to several weeks. The rash is ves vesicular and progresses just like chickenpox, with papules, then vesicles, then crusting. You can see in this picture that the rash stops at midline and is in the distribution of the maxillary area. This slide gives you just a few more examples of zoster. Remember, dermatomal distribution and usually unilateral. The middle photo shows zoster from the trigeminal ganglion, cranial nerve 5, ophthalmic distribution. We call this herpes zoster ophthalmicus. A patient with this syndrome may have conjunctivitis, keratitis, uveitis, and optic nerve palsies that can sometimes cause chronic ocular inflammation, loss of vision, and debilitating pain. This slide compares and contrasts varicella and zoster, the two manifestations of VZV infection. You can see that varicella involves the whole body, is an itchy rash, and has characteristic progression of lesions. In contrast, zoster is in a dermatomal distribution, is painful, and has a similar progression of rash, but it lasts longer and the lesions may blend together more. Bacterial infections of some of the vesicles, called superinfection, due to scratching and trauma is the most common complication of BZV infection. Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes are the most common organism causing this problem. Primary infection in older patients, mainly adolescents and adults, is more severe due to the immune response, cytotoxic T cells, with resultant tissue damage. And as I previously mentioned, primary infection in immunocompromised patients is more severe due to lack of T cells. Post-hepatic neuralgia is a major complication related to zoster. This occurs in approximately 20% of patients with zoster. The pain of PHN may be sharp, burning, throbbing, or stabbing. The skin may be unusually sensitive to even the lightest touch, such as clothing or bedsheets, to the smallest breeze, and to changes in temperature, either hot or cold. Pain is thought to be due to inflammation triggered by viral replication, leading to nerve damage and increased sensitivity of the pain receptors and can last months to years. Reactivation in immunocompromised hosts can result in disseminated disease, which is not isolated just to the dermatome. So in summary, disease caused by VZV is common and has different manifestations for primary and reactivation disease. The rash has a characteristic progression from papule to vesicle, cloudy vesicle to crusting. Varicella is a disease of children who get a widespread itchy rash. This is primary infection. Zoster is a disease of older patients who develop a painful localized rash. This is reactivation disease. 